My name is Kang Kyo and I'm an actor and filmmaker. I just completed a stint in rehab, or how I like to see it, a, a retreat, or a center for spiritual practices. You know, of course they believed I had, well, a drink problem, even alcoholism, but I, I disagree. Of course, um, I've had a lot of drinking in my time and I just believe that because I'm such a spirited person that when I take drink, I just get very boisterous. So I, I'm just gonna cut it out of my life. Hey, would you think Andy would mind if we took a detour? So I've decided just to put the plug in the jug, move on, put it behind me, all systems go. I'm ready for action. I feel great. Oh well. How are we doing? My long lost cousin. That's it. <laughs> Here I am. Good to see you, Con. Right there. How are you, man? Ah, oh, it's the best. All right. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah, look at me. Looking fresh. Yeah, you know, yeah. put in a bit of a stint, so uh, <laughs> out now. Feeling good. Taking on the world again. Yeah, all set to go. Uh, thanks, thanks so much. Uh, so are we off? Uh, no, this is, this is where we're actually based. So this is the place. This oh, yeah, the crew's based here, is it? Um, all of us, you as well, and oh really? Isn't that someone's house or something? No. Yeah, well it is. I mean, it's a f but they no, it's a family. They they rent it out during the summer when they go to Spain for the summer. So this is this is their home, you know. That, all right. Okay, okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Cool. Sounds sounds um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. how so how are things? Good man. Yeah. I just uh, you know I'm just a bit you know. Yeah, I'm Andy Lanigan, uh, a first cousin of Kong Kyo. And I'm actually a first time filmmaker as well, which I'm very excited about. Um, the inspiration behind this film is, um, well, it's Khan's story, of course, but primarily it's the fact that uh, Khan um, and his father have been estranged from each other for, wow, the, the best part of, of 25 years. Um, you see, I met Michael, who was Con's father, at uh, at Joe's funeral, um, recently, and sorry, Joe, Joe was was Con's mother. Uh, she she passed away um, quite recently, and um, when when I spoke to Michael at the funeral, I was absolutely blown away by by the emotion that was emanating out of him, and uh, I, I just felt that a lot of it was was down to the fact that he has no relationship with Con. Um, yeah, it's, I feel a little strange in someone else's house, um, but I guess this is it. Um, Andy's, Andy's doing, he's trying his best, so I'm not going to like, get into all that, but uh, look, I'll try to settle in as best I can. How would you pass the time? Or Oh, there was loads of activities. Tons, oh, okay. like we had lots to do with tons of, um, like, you know, sitting around and kind of having fun and, and talking about stuff. They wanted me to talk about a lot of other stuff that I, I just didn't, um, I didn't agree with, but they're, it's real cushy, you know, it's... Yeah, is it nice? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. lovely. It's private, it's a private oh, it's institution. Pri it's, pri it's actually private in, in full stop, actually, with me as well, so I don't really want to go into that. Uh, oh, yeah, no, because, no, um, oh, sorry, sorry. It's not about that, documentaries and about that, like, so... Yeah, no, sorry, I should, yeah, maybe... me kind of coming out and stuff and... Uh, yeah. Not coming out, like uh, coming out of the, mm. the place. Mm. Um, Michael was very happy to hear though that you were that you'd gone through it successfully. You know, so yeah, that's cool. It's great. Um, yeah. Even though it's, it's quite bright, I mean, it's, yeah, it's long. It doesn't get actually. By the way, John the Baptist was an alcoholic. There's a little bit of knowledge for you.
Addiction and alcoholism is a disease. A disease with oneself and with the world around you. And it doesn't matter who you are or what you're doing with your life. If you have this disease, you will ultimately suffer its consequences without you even knowing that you have the illness. Addiction will always win over the addict and the alcoholic. It's a phenomenon of the mind and body that cannot be fully explained, but it exists. And it's not a matter of willpower. It's not that. I mean, a person who happily cures themselves through willpower, then they're not an addict. And that's the simple truth. Have you guys seen my movies? No? Well, you should check them out. And he doesn't want me talking about them, so I won't go into it too much, but... They deal with very serious issues. Such as how our society has raped the children and the people as a whole. Well, it's not nice, is it? How the religious institutions, the financial institutions, the government, the 1%, makes me, oh, makes me ill thinking about it. <sighs> okay, so I won't talk about it anymore. I, I don't wanna infringe on Andy's vision, so. Um, yeah, look, we'll just, we'll just call it a night. Thanks very much, thanks for coming. Thanks for picking me up, thanks for food. I'm gonna hit the hay even though it's still bright, I don't care, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, so thank you. Did you notice that um, Con didn't wanna talk about Michael at all? Like. Did you think he was too close after the whole rehab thing? I don't know. I'm tired. I'm gonna shoot off, okay? Let's just call it a night. The local kind of opinion on, on Con Kyo. <laughs> see, see what people think about me. Really? Wow. wow. Dude, that's a risky one, I tell you. Why? Well, I don't know, just you realise where you are, you know? Yeah, your hometown. Well, it's kind of my hometown, it's not really my hometown. Kind of. If he, yeah, well, look, I mean, you're always going to have dissenters, con, you know, but sure, I'm sure uh, overall it's going to be positive, you know. We can just edit out the bad ones, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah we'll see what we can do with you. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, looking forward to it now. How are you feeling yourself about the plan? You know, uh, the big, the big meet mm -hmm. with himself. And do you know, do you know what I was thinking mm -hmm. actually? Um, we should go to that new restaurant. You know the guy, remember I was telling you about the guy that owns it? Ronan. Um, yes. Do you like salmon? I do. Do you like, the, the farm stuff is terrible, isn't it? Well, yeah. Well, we'll I'm get some it. rod caught salmon for lunch. Will we do that? We'll have a late lunch, so. Rod caught? Rod caught, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got a text about it this morning. So, yeah. Cool. So, All right, dude. So Listen, cool. talk to you soon. We'll talk about that, yeah. Take it easy. Um, yeah, we'll just wait. We'll, we'll get to work, lads, and um, and tip on. Yeah, sounds good. All right, see ya. See ya. Can can who? Kyo, Kyo, Kyo. I yeah yeah yeah. He's from town. I know him. I know I'll belong to him. No, I haven't seen him himself for a while, but I did see him on the television. Don't ask me what programme it was because he popped up a few times. And honestly, God, it made me sick. I felt like throwing up when I saw this little jumped up little buck, this feckin' pain in the arse that suddenly knows everything about everything and he knows nothing about nothing. And you know, I think he's a great man and I think he's a great inspiration to us as well. I mean, like a role model. I mean, young filmmakers, especially in Ireland, they need someone to look up to, you know? And we don't have a lot of filmmakers in Ireland, so a man like that is a great inspiration. Oh, Kan Kyo. Jesus, he's so amazing. He's so talented, you know? Like, I, um, I saw something the other day he was in. I, it's near, I can't think now, but has there ever been anyone who just encapsulated acting? Like, he was the character, you know? There was no distinguishing Khan from this guy. I mean, I can't remember the name. But like, it was just so, he blew me away. I mean, he's all right, like, uh, 
he's human, like, so, I mean, the standards aren't great anyway to begin with, but, I mean, like, yeah, I used to watch his movies, they're good, like, you know, you, you get your money's worth, but, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm a bit put off by his behaviour recently, like, you know, he's going around acting all high and mighty and um, telling people how to live, you know, trying to change things, you know? Yeah, I've, I've known that guy for years. You could say, in a way, I grew up with him. I've known him since I was about six. I personally hate that guy. I mean, I, I hate him dearly, you know? Uh, he kind of epitomises everything I despise. Uh, I'm not surprised he's in the movie industry because, you know, that's where a lot of fake people are, so he'll, he'll really fit in very nicely there. I wouldn't be surprised if he went into politics and made a great job of it because we need more people like him talking about the things that really matter in this country, especially the things that matter to young people, what we're concerned about, what we're worried about when we get older. So I think he's a great man and I'd love to see more of him. He's just so, I mean, like he speaks about homelessness and you know, like all these political issues and all this kind of stuff, you know, that we're really interested in as young people. I think he's like such a great role model. And I mean, like I said, he's not exactly hurt on the eyes. You know, we all got hit hard with the train of reality, like, you know, and I think that's what this con guy needs. Like, you know, he wants to be, you know, he needs a hard smacking hit with the, with the train of reality, like, you know, and I, and I think the sooner that happens, you know, the better off we all are, you know and suddenly you're Mr. Fashion and you're Mr. Opinion and you're Mr. Knowledgeable and you're Mr. International and Socialist and this, that and the other. But feed the world, would you? Feed your feckin' family. You, you don't make me sick. Don't make me sick, Colin. Just feck off and leave us alone in the name and honour of God. Peace. Peace. Give me peace. Yes, no, we're just on the way to... Um Michael's place, Khan's father's place. Um, didn't realise actually he lived so far out, middle of nowhere really. There probably will be some people who think I'm exploiting the situation. Maybe I am, in some small way. To, to bring out the truth, okay? But at least I can put my hand on my heart and say, well, I'm doing what's best for my family. And my extended family, actually. Um, I mean, I'm putting myself on the line here. My wife doesn't want me doing this. My daughter misses me. I'm using my own personal savings, okay? My father's ill. My mum wants me around. So, I mean, if that's exploitation, well then, so be it. Uh, I know what's in my own heart. Of course, I blame myself for everything. I sure can't blame Joe. I was a stupid man. I, I should have known better. Uh, we married too young. We did. We married too young and, and everything moved too fast. And, you know, I don't know. I, I don't even have a picture of her. Of us, even. I destroyed everything. You see, when, when Khan came along, we were, we were arguing all the time, you know. We had that love, you know, a, a, a kind of fiery love, but burnt out too quickly, you know. And uh, we met in the theatre and Joe got pregnant quite quickly and Joe loved being pregnant. She, she thought it as an artistic thing, you know, and, and it made her more rounded as a woman. <laughs> she was rounded, all right. <laughs> I, I suffered mentally, you know, I did mental problems. I, I thought of everything negatively. I, I got a job in the boot factory.
But then someone started a rumour that that Joe was uh, was seeing too much of a theatre director, you know. And then I suppose things went out of control. I, I went a bit crazy. I, I I asked Joe for a for a DNA test on Con. I suppose that was the beginning of the end. Really, uh, we drifted apart. I suppose I was trying to hurt her. Growing up the way I did was tough, working in menial jobs because my family were so poor. Oh, school was secondary in our family. My father was away in England working on the railroads and to be fair to him, he tried his best but it never seemed to be enough. I discovered theatre very early on, a small local theatre, and there I grew up and fell in love. <laughs> Far too young really, but that was the norm back then. Michael was another actor a very raw talent who caught my eye. Our son Con came along not long afterwards and the rest is history. Things changed between me and Michael and we just couldn't seem to get on and soon our relationship was irreparable, really after all that had happened. When I finally left, I spent my life on the road and that's where I felt most comfortable. I remember working on the stages in Bristol, Manchester, London, Dublin, sometimes in the same month. It was a crazy time, <laughs> but it was a great time. My son never left my side, never. Recently, I saw him play the role of Colm in JB's Sive, like he was Colm himself. Such a talent. It'd be very easy for people to say that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, but like me, Khan is an individual, and he does things his own way. <laughs> He's going to kill me for saying the following, but he has got such a commanding presence on stage. There are great things ahead for Khan. Believe me, great things. You know, she was a local girl, not too far outside town, but I saw her coming in and I knew her. And, and then when she came out to London, with the boy, I think she got married and she split up with him. Uh, not too sure what happened there, but uh, she split up with him and uh, ended up in London and she was doing a bit of acting over there. And I was working as a stagehand. Uh, we're still a bit in the old Vic and a few of the other um, theatres around the town because, you know, you get, you get the knack of one Vic and they drag you in somewhere else. But I used to see her coming in, getting jobs. She did fairly well for herself. You know, I don't think she was ever going to be famous. She was never that good, but uh, she played a lot of nice little parts and, and I think she got quite a few jobs from being friendly with the uh, stage manager. <laughs> and uh, of course the boy used to come in with her and she'd have him at the, uh, in the wings and, and myself and a couple of other the hands would be around there so we'd see a lot of him. Uh, and he was really good, great kid, he'd be ever so quiet there keeping himself himself and he'd sit there with his pencils and his crayons and he'd do his little drawings and he start, I remember he started writing stuff down about you know what his mum's doing what she's not doing and making up his own little stories. Conkyo. Yeah he's doing very well for himself. Then again he is the kind of person to land on his feet wherever he goes right? Yeah. No I've seen his films I did. Yeah, I've also seen him on TV, winning all of his awards. <laughs> Look, I know you're not here to talk about his career, though. This is a personal thing. <sighs> well, I know all about his father and his struggles. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad you're taking that angle. Well, it's personal for me, too. See, the reality is that we all have struggles, okay? Not just Kong Kyo. And just because he's making films doesn't make him any better than the rest of us. Because Jesus, he certainly isn't. <sighs> no, when I heard about this film, I knew I had a chance. A chance to tell the world about the real Con Kyo. The guy behind the mask sort of thing. Yeah, the guy I knew. <sighs> Look, the truth is, that guy is a fucking fraud. I'm telling you, that guy is a worthless person. He treated me like absolute shit. Did he tell you that? No, of course he didn't. Oh, and it wasn't just me. There were several others. Oh yeah, he was a real ladies man. 
lived on the scene for years. And I can tell you, he assumes his role as a playboy exceptionally well. <laughs> it's a joke. That's why whenever I hear him trying to spread the word of forgiveness or truth or God when he's talking about political revolution or equality or social change, <laughs> I see right through the lies. <laughs> I see the guy that uses women. Yeah. <laughs> I see the liar. Because you know what, that, that's what he is. He's a fucking liar. He manipulated you, just like he manipulated me and everybody else. The only thing is, I don't buy into his bullshit anymore. And frankly, anyone that does, I think, is a fucking idiot. So, you're still out there? Uh gallivanting around the, the town? She say I'm not. To be honest now, those days seem like a lifetime ago. Yeah. Christ. Yeah, life's a lot different now. Yeah, yourself and... Like, yourself and Ian's pretty much settled, like... Well, yeah, um... I mean, we're together eight years now, so I guess you can call it settled. But Christ, yeah. Like marriage? Jesus, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Don't mention yeah. the, yeah, the M don't, word, thanks. You don't have to explain it to me. I think marriage is a corrupt entity, like, you know, it's... The faster it's gone out of society, the better. You know? Jesus Christ, Con. That's <laughs> a bit bleak, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just writing something about it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, um, well... Pretty harsh take on it. So you... Like, what is it your... What's your take on the whole love thing, so... Like, oh Christ. What is all that um, stuff about? She's don't ask me an awkward question anyway. Um, I don't know, like, how, how can you describe it? Like, I don't know, um, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> right, um, You're the one that's in the settled relationship. Yeah, well, like, um, I don't know, like, Ian will, um, like, sacrifice things, I suppose, small things for me, and I'll do the same for him. I think that's the guts of it, like, um, like, don't get, like, don't get me wrong, like, we have our own paths, you know what I mean? I mean, I do my thing, he does his, his thing, but, uh, yeah, I guess you just, you just try not to take each other for granted, that's the thing. And, um, yeah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm, you're gonna cut this out, right? I cannot have this stuff going in your movie, because it's way too embarrassing. You signed, you signed the thing, oh, so. Christ. <laughs> what? Sounds amazing. Yeah. You're lucky. You saying you never had that? What? What you just explained? Yeah. No. Love? No. Definitely not. Not well. Not that type of love, anyway. Maybe that's where you're going wrong. Okay. <laughs> They start the Dr. Laura Just show. Saying, like. oh, okay, why well, don't you think so, really? Maybe, yeah. Is that the missing piece of Con Kyo? It could be. Okay. Alright, look, mind yourself okay. and just, you know, do what you can touch, please. Alright, bring I it will. in. Come I on. Alright. I'll miss you. I'll see you. I'll All miss right. you. I'll miss you already, to be honest. Talk to you later. Let's not do it. Let's not get upset. Okay. See ya. See ya. Bye. Bye. Laura's amazing. Every time I meet her, she just makes me feel calm, you know? She's just so real and, you know, just down to earth. Yeah. She just has a way about her. Here. Oh, there you go. What's up? I just want to say, like, um, I've just been thinking, you know? Um, I know what it's like to be a filmmaker. I want you to get your vision. I want you to get what you want. I am going to meet Michael for you, man. All right? Yes. Camera's there. That's good. Yep. Cheers, man. Okay. Okay. Cousins. Yeah. Oh, that makes me so happy. Yeah. Oh, yes. So that's it. Oh, thank that's you. It's going to happen anyway. Thank you. <coughs> I know. Anyway, so I'm, I'm going to head off. Um, Sorry, who's that? Emma. Emma's her name. 
Oh, oh yeah, cool. Great, it's going well then, yeah? What's going well? Oh, no, sorry, I, I thought you had something I, with, with Emma. No, I'm just literally just going to meet her. Oh, oh yeah, so, okay, cool. Yeah. No, listen, um, thanks, man. Your that's, vision. Yeah, you know, that's... Your vision. Put it there, man. You're the man. All right, okay. You're the man, Con. Yeah, guys. Thanks, thanks. Okay. Appreciate that. No bother. Yes! Yes! Oh, thank God for that. No, no answer. Did anybody see him? Who, who was the last person to see him? Saw him go to bed last night. And he went to bed? He was said he was going there. There's no way he was up before me this morning. There's no way. Con, Con, when he's not working, he's, he's, he's not an early riser. He sleeps on. He didn't go drinking last night. Relapse. Relapse can be inevitable in many ways. Addiction doesn't have any favourites. It works on the addict in the same way as it works on every other addict. It centres on a feeling of dissatisfaction with oneself and with the world around them. And this is the crux of the problem. If it's not a drink, then it's a drug. If not, then it's sex. Food, exercise, gambling, work, you name it. Addiction will always find a way to express itself. Hey, Con Kill here. I'm unavailable at the moment. If you are seeking acting services or filmmaking services, please get in touch with my agent, George Summers. It's Andy here. But when you see the number of addicts that I do, becomes the norm. And the norm for the addict is chaos. Everything is upside down. And the only way they can feel okay about themselves is to use something, someplace, somebody, to feel better about themselves. It's like a, it's like a hole in the soul that can never be filled. Never. Would you look, lads? Prodigal son himself. Yep. That's it. Alright. What's up? Well. How you doing? Long night. Oof. Yeah, man, this this girl, oh, God, amazing. Emma, remember I told you it's the girl that was texting me and that kind of stuff. Good phone, um, yeah. He was just up the road there, yeah, so uh, I was walking back, got yeah. your voicemail. I was literally just going to call you right away. Like, <laughs> didn't, didn't really know if you were, you know, alive or not, to be honest. So. What? Alive? Can you, can you see how many times I, I tried to call you, Come. Yeah, but that's just that's that's not my fault. Like, obviously, I'm alive. You know, I mean. Well, it'd be nice if you tried to contact me back because I'm I trying to make a film here, and I was literally. So you're disappearing for half the fucking day. I mean, actually, you know, can, can we just have a I quick word outside? Can, can I have a quick word with you? Just, yeah, sure. I think we just have a quick word. No, no, lads, if you don't mind, just. So, um, um, Andy's mom is after ringing. Uh, 
you know, I don't know if he, I don't know if he told you, uh, but he's uh, he, his father is suffering from Alzheimer's, and anytime she rings, she she, she really rings. To be honest, um, it's usually bad news. So I think it's quite unfair, to be honest. Like just to ring him, not really care about him, but just to kind of call him to take care of. Anyway. That's, that's kind, of, kind of weird, isn't it? There's an ambulance going by at the same time. But anyway, let me tell you about... Uh, what's going on? What's going on? It's just that, uh, you know. What happened? Oh. Wait, 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 one second, what's going on? Where, where are you going? Oh, I have to go home, man. Dad, what? Dad, not dad, man. He, 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 he went out for a walk and couldn't find his way home. You know, he just... It's the fucking, it's the Alzheimer's, he just, he's just, yeah. you okay? Ah, yeah, I'm just what? gonna worry about mum and stuff, you know. Don't so. worry about it, I'll take over, yeah, it's hmm? okay. Don't worry, don't worry, listen, I'll, you get packed up and you take care of things back home, okay? Do not worry about anything, okay? Don't worry, don't worry about a thing. Yeah, well, well I'm... I'm coming back down, obviously, for the meeting, so... Of course. There's nothing really to... Of course, Andy. It's going to be okay, man. Listen, so do, you need, do you need, um... Do you need anything b before we go, or...? No, no, let's just... Let's, if it's okay, just, let's just head back, yeah. Yeah. Fuck it, yeah. Let's send my regards, obviously. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Fuck. Can you just put on your seatbelt, we... we keep it going, or will we cut there? You're doing a few bits here. Oh, I'm doing a bit. As always, there's always, always something to do. <laughs> oh, the place is looking well now, to be fair. The place is just a great spot altogether. You couldn't, ah. beat, you couldn't beat it. No, nice and peaceful up here. Yeah, quiet, quiet. Ah, yeah, that's what you want. Yeah. Um, listen, I won't keep you. Right. Um, I'm only calling to, to firm up this meeting that we that we talked about. Yeah. About meeting Con. Mm hmm So we've we've um we've settled on a time and a place. Okay. Right. Um, right. The Roast House Cafe in town, do you, do you know? A new place, I know. New place, Haven't yeah. been in it yet. <laughs> no, no, we'll, hopefully you you will be shortly. Yeah. Um, we're looking at Thursday, 2 p.m. This Thursday coming? This Thursday coming. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so, Con's yeah. agreed to it. And, right. um, right. you know how he is, we might not get too many opportunities to do this, so... <laughs> it's best that we just go ahead and do it, Mick, yes. you know? No, no, I'll be there. Two o'clock. You sure? Yeah. You're, sure. you're happy enough for that? Happy enough for that. So, um... I, I'm gonna have to let it go quickly. I've a, a lot to do, you know. Oh, so yeah. No, 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 of course, of course. If you don't you, mind. No, no. I'm away, lad. Thanks no, for coming, lads. But just, I'll see you Thursday, yeah? Thursday, 2 no PM. problem. Yeah, be there, be there. No All problem. right, Mick. Take it easy, lads. See you. Mind yourself. Mind yourself, going out. We'll talk to you Thursday, yeah? Thursday for sure, yeah, no problem. I think I understand why Andy's doing this. I really, I really think I do. Yeah, yeah, but he's missing one glaring problem. It's my father, Michael. He left my mother 25 years ago because he was jealous of her talent. Did he tell you that? Yeah, he's back acting again in the theater. So what? Big coincidence, isn't it? Do you not think it's to get my attention, to make this documentary more interesting? I don't buy it. You see, my father has no balls. I got my balls from my mother. She gave them to me by taking me by the hand and pushing me into the big bad world. I was involved in theater from six years old all the way up to 18, 19 years old, and I made my first fucking movie then, My Brother's Lake, which I got a lot of stick for, but I don't care. And you know what? I'll be a bigger man. I'll meet my biological father. Yeah, I'll meet him and I'll put my hand out and I'll say, I forgive you. Forget about it. Because that's who I am. And then everybody will be happy and we all can move on. Isn't that what you want? 
You know, in my opinion, George Summers is the best agent in the country. I'll always get well-paid work from him. He's got contacts and producers in the four corners of the globe. I've worked in Russia, I've worked in Asia, South Africa, in Canada, Alaska. Life, do you know if you know this, life's a game, yeah? Okay, we've got power, knowledge, talent. Hmm. If you can play that game well, you've got the world in your hand like a ball of mala. Mala. Do I or do I not say that? You always say that. I too. always we, say that. Because we like mala, the two of us. Do you know mala, guys? Yeah. You don't know mala. It's Play-Doh. It's Play-Doh. They still sell it. You know. know. You know. Because, do you know why you know? Because you are rolling the mala. And all my characters. Okay? Now lately, you might say the mall has been rolling him a little bit. Yeah? That happens. Yeah. Sometimes the mall rolls back. Yeah? Blips. Little blips. Okay? At that little blip, impossible became something. I'm possible. You're not possible. You wait till I finish with the business. Absolutely. But we've got news because we've got work lined up. For me? For you! See how fast that was. Up I! Yeah! My hands are a little bit sweaty because I'm still a bit nervous. <laughs> yes! Yes! And you are going to roll the shit out of that character. Out of the character. Okay, am I right? Siberian forest, here we come. <laughs> yes. But tell me first, yeah? If you don't mind, how is your mind? Is all that stuff... You good now, yeah? Oh, for sure, Georgie. Yeah? It's like you say. It's behind me. And... You know, allegorically speaking, it's like there was a dent in the car and now it's like it wasn't there. I got a good panel beater. And who's your panel beater? That was nice. No, I went, no what I meant was the, the rehab was my panel beater. But I'm your panel beater. Yeah. And I will beat the fuck out of this guy <laughs> if I need to. No, allegorically speaking, not literally. It was actually quite cushy. I put on a few pounds. They were feeding me bread, potatoes and gravy and stuff. Con. Weird. You were like a s- A son? Con, you are like a nephew to me, yeah? yeah? Con, you are like a s- nephew to me, okay? S- nephew. A really nice little nephew guy, okay? And I don't Smurf. want to see what happened to you the last time happen again, okay? Appreciate that, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. No. Yeah. So it's not going to happen again, is it? Yeah, no, no. No, promise? No. Yeah. Promise. Promise? Promise. Yeah. <laughs> promise. So he promised. So that's. Why are you holding my chin? That's all. I'm well, not holding. <laughs> okay. All yes. right. So this is what George is great. Yeah. Oh, quick, quick, still. The big time. Facebook. Um, I was uh, I was going to get. There's two companies I'm going for. I, we'll talk about it afterwards mm. about the actual specifics. But uh, mm. one of them is like a lot more expensive. The other one is really cheap. Mm. Um, but like, what's the point in spending too much money on business cards? That's what I was thinking. What's the point in you getting business cards? That's what I was thinking. Are you getting business cards for oh, for me? Like, is it or you for yourself? Is it or no? I just for myself. So I'd be pro, more proactive, kind of going out there. But what's with your name on it? Like, my agent is George. Yeah, but I have cards. The best with, agent in the country. Yeah, damn straight. But I have cards with my name on them. Like, I've got my cards. So what's the point in you having? Because like when I meet people, I was like, you know. You know, like this is my agent as well, and I have my own card. But he, that guy, will, that guy in your mind has my card. Like, exactly. remember we talked about this. Remember we did the improv stuff. Remember you were telling me that I need to give a lap back. But I that's to make you feel good on that day when the cameras turn on. All that stuff's gone. Then when the cameras on, I'm on. I wanted to bring you in because I know you're such a great, like, one second. You're such a great agent and stuff. Like, yeah, I the show that the fact that you're a mentor as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but if like, I, I need to feed you stuff as well, like. No, you don't. No? If you, if you need to show how good I am, let it show. You know? Okay. Let it show. Not okay. frozen. Not let it... Let it show. The yeah? truth I is can't get generally... You gig in that one. I can't get you gig enough for them. The truth is generally seen, never heard. That's a perfect example now of you chipping in with something that's not adding to anything. You know what I mean? Let me flow. I'm a river, you're a pond. You're a pond on the Caragrahan Strait. Just in the last six months, to be honest, I was a big river before that, like... I'm gushing. Yeah, Okay. but you're always gushing. Yeah, you're, you're damp. You're a damp spot on a road. Okay, sorry. 
They're watching. Okay, listen. We're having a bit of a... Okay, listen. I just... Being back brings up a lot of memories, actually. There was a lot of drinking. <laughs> there was a lot... There was 52 pubs at the time, and I'm not sure how many is here now, but there was a lot of drinking, and they didn't care what age you were. Like, you know, you could just go in. There was a couple of pubs you just could go in at 15, 16, and God, it was so crazy. But uh, my mom was so liberal, she didn't care about it, and... Yeah. You know, she, she got cancer to the bile duct and she told me one day like that she was she had with had been given six months to live and uh, and there was already two months gone and and i was like this completely fucking ridiculous like you're, you're not going to die in four months and she did she died four months almost to the day it was just insane and um You know, you know what happened then? The rumors started. People, my own family. That's why I don't believe in the word. After what happened, you know, they, they, they said it was her drinking. She was an alcoholic and, and that she was a hard drinker and she, she, she didn't fucking take care of me properly. That she was bringing me around to the theater. She didn't care about my upbringing. And fuck them, you know? Snakes in the grass, you know? with their fangs out, even when the fucking body's in the fucking coffin. Sick people. You know what, I just, uh, guys, I just, I don't know, it's not a good idea, to be honest. I don't. I feel like the um, struggle will be worth it in the end. Um, I know I'm doing it for the right reasons. I know I am. I mean, every time I, I, I go home and talk to my father, I can feel the loss, you know, the fact that I'm slowly losing him. So if I can somehow get Michael and Con to meet, even if it's even if it's through my own struggles at home and everything, I'll know. I'll, I'll know it'll be it'll be worth it. Con didn't even connect with me at all. He, he just couldn't connect with him at all. Well, Joe spent most of her time, her spare time, out in 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 the theatre, and she always brought Con with her. I, I didn't like that. You know, I, I just I didn't think Con should be in the theatre all the time. But then. Um, then one day, uh, she was going out late and we had this massive argument. Um, she was going out and, and Con stayed with me and I was minding Con. And he started crying and he wouldn't stop. I, I remember now I can still hear him. He cried and cried and cried. And I, I took a few drinks. She said, nearly one to him. But then Joe came back late and I in instinctively knew that, that she, she had done something wrong. Now, I don't want to speak ill of the dead now, so I'll, I'll leave it at that, but uh, I left that night. I went downhill mentally and then went back on the drink heavily and I, I lost my job. And about about uh, seven months later, I, I came back out to the house, but Joe had changed the locks and um, she called the guards. And the guards, when they came, they told me plainly to go away. I suppose that was the end of it then, um, the real end. Joe filed for divorce and, and I hardly saw Con maybe two or three times, very very briefly and, and that was it. That was the end of it.
And he... Sorry. He said he'd be here. I don't know what to say. I'm trying your best. Sorry. Um, I'm just gonna, just gonna head out, okay? Take it easy. Come on. Con grew up, I guess, in an adult life, in an adult's world. He was always with me at the theatre. He was in the wings. He examined me on my lines. <laughs> he used to know those lines th just by reading them once. I always grapple with learning those lines. He was at our parties, and perhaps he saw too much at an early age. If I have one major regret, it probably is the fact that he didn't have a stable background, a stable home, and he didn't have the same friends all the time. We were people on the move. In retrospect, that was probably very difficult on a little boy. I can't look back. Things are as they are. You know what, I think it's... Yeah, I'm going to take a quick look for him. That was a gunshot. Mike! Michael! Mike! It was down here, wasn't it? I, th I think the shot came from down here. Michael! Mike! Michael! Michael! No sign of him. I'm not cut out for this shit. I'll have one more look up in the cabin and then I'm done. <laughs> Jesus, I was looking all over for you. I was out doing a bit of hunting. Hunting? Hunting, you know, a gun, you know, you shoot things. Yeah, uh, we heard the shot. Um, did you forget about Thursday, 2 p.m.? Con, I, the beating? I didn't feel up to it. So, you're telling me you, you didn't forget about it? You just didn't feel up I to it? I didn't feel up to it. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. You, you do realise, Mike, how much effort I've put into this? Making this happen, yourself and Con, to meet. I mean, it's, 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 it was hard enough getting Con to agree to it, but I mean, I didn't think there'd be too much hassle with yourself now, to be honest. You know, I'm... <laughs> Come on, uh, leave, lads, come on. Go on, leave. Hold on. Le leave. leave! Jesus, are you deaf? Leave! Get off, come on! Go on. And I tell you, don't leave that bloody gate open like you did last time. Hold on a second now. Just... Michael, no, hold on a second now. Let me have a word with you. Okay? Let me tell you something. I am sick and tired of being the mediator in this shit show. That is you and Con Kyo. I'm tired of it. I've put everything into this. And let me tell you another thing about your son. Kong Kyo, the great and mighty actor. His persona, his attitude, it's not real, Michael. It's fake. He's burying pain. And you know where his pain comes from? You. Why do you think he even takes to the bottle? Huh? Why do you think he even does that? Get off my land! Do you hear me? Get off my land, all of it! For oh, Christ's sake, Calm go down, on. calm down! No, I will not calm down. You remember, you came to fucking me, not me to you. Get in that fucking car. I was trying to help you, It doesn't matter, you helped me. It was your idea, pal, not I, fucking mine. I had enough of the fucking... Get off my land! Yeah, so look, um, sorry, guys, that you had to experience that. That's a side to Michael I've <laughs> never really seen, to be honest, so... 
It came as much of a shock to me as it did to you, I'm sure. Um, I think, uh, I think that was the final nail in the coffin, though, yeah. There's no point anymore, like, we've tried, like, it's just... Can't get them to, you know, so... I'm afraid that's it, guys, but thanks a million for... Thanks a million for everything and coming on this half journey. The problem is that the addict and the alcoholic, they try too much too soon. It's like trying to build a house without a foundation. It's not possible. And this is a regular occurrence because the understanding just isn't there. And unfortunately, this can lead to very, very serious consequences. When I get him yet another top end gig, big production, nice to learn her, and uh, Con doesn't show up. Or sorry, uh, according to himself, shows up, does no work, and leaves after an hour. I mean, obviously that reflects just terribly on me, you know? And to be honest with you, I can't have that. You know, simply, no. I cannot. Bye bye, Con. Yeah, really apt name for who you really are. But you know what? I forgive you, I do. And I'm really glad you're living this falsehood because at least I know who I am. I mean, he was born in the county, right? But he lived with his mother above in the big smoke. So then he'd come down here for the summer to, uh, to party. To fuck around with my sister. He messed her mind up. Hmm. I can see him now. You tell him. Con, are you listening to me? I'm coming for you. I'm going to get you. And I'm going to fuck you. There we go. Jesus Christ, Con. What happened to you? I don't know what this. What do you mean you don't know? What? Is that blood? I don't know, man. I actually don't know. What the fuck? Where were you last night? I, I, where was the last I think there was guards, to be honest. I think I see blue. I, there was blue lights. I don't know, man. Sure, if there was guards, can you be in the fucking station? What about that station, fucking man? prick fucking Marky that kept coming up to you in town, giving you Did shit? You see him last night? I don't know, man. I blacked out. It was my first time drinking. I, I, I have no idea. Like, Show your hands. Really I, there's nothing. Yeah, I don't feel sore. They feel a bit sore, but they're fine, you know? I, I think someone's playing a prank on me. Come on in. You found a place, anyways? I did. Thanks for that. There's no worry about it. Where is he? He's in the back there. Go in there. Sam? I'm sorry about everything. I, I know it's not enough, you know. I suppose. Might as well do it so, will we? Just sit down and have a chat. Okay. Yesterday when you didn't come, I, I was thinking, what would, I, what would I say to you? And I guess what was coming up for me was that there's no point having a big family drama moment for the cameras. No, I'm not going to make a big deal out of this. But I am going to have my say. No matter what happened, you left us. You were asking my mother to give, us, give a paternity test to prove if I was your son. You were bitter and jealous towards her. You left her on her own. You left me on my own, a five-year-old boy who adapted but didn't have the words to express himself, obviously. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not naive, I'm not a person to think everything's black and white and it's good versus evil. 
you know, I, I'm, I know the complexities of life. So I understand. But I'm not talking as an adult, I'm going to talk as a five-year-old boy that needed his father, that needed somebody to just want him. So, I just don't want the excuses, only acknowledgement. I forgive you. There, I said it. Thank you, Con. I said it. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Oh, there he is! Well done, my son. Thanks, man. Thanks. Jeez, you're such a big man. <sighs> Keep forgetting that. That was magic. Yeah. What? Movie magic. Movie magic, man. Reality magic. How are you feeling? Good. It's, it's over, you know. What's over? The project. Oh, man. Fuck the project, man. I mean... What I just saw there was... Con, that was special. Yeah. That's the, that's the beginning of something, no? You're special. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. You're such a great crew. Thank you so much. Well done, man. I really appreciate this. And you've done really well. Really well to put this together. I really mean that. Well, like, it was a family kind of project. Like, I, mean. I reckon I could get you a job on the crew. Like, maybe not Siberian Forest, but the next one, for sure. Maybe production coordinator or some other assistant. I don't know. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't think if Vaughn would uh, let me go near a set again, to be honest, you know. Um, yeah, so yeah no, I, don't, I think, you know, I mean, this was, this was different. But I don't think it's really my cup of tea. You know? Okay. Well, anyway, listen, Georgie sorted something out, so I have to go. I'm just going to check up with um, Emma. I'm going to reconcile. That's because of you. Wait, no. I'm in that kind of mood. You're, you're heading off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Siberian forest, I have to go. That's what I was, you know. I thought, I thought we were going to grab a bit of lunch or something, no? Was that in the schedule, no? Well, no, but I just thought, I didn't know you were... This what? is rap, isn't it? Like, I, I have to... What? Listen, I'll book tickets. You come over to the UK. Serious, after Siberian forest, straight away. You're safe when you're cool. going. Yeah, sounds good, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Have a break. Yeah, cool. Listen, take care. Okay. Let's do the thing. <laughs> good luck, man. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Siberian Forest. Take care. See you, Con. Therapy is essential for the addict. Recovery has to be pursued daily. It's a daily thing. The addict will not survive alone. There has to be daily maintenance and daily contact. You know, I've seen a lot of people die from this disease. And it's as simple as this sometimes. If someone doesn't accept the seriousness of their illness and take the necessary steps, then jail, institutions and death can follow. We live in a very cynical and judgmental world. We only want to deal with the popular social issues. We don't want to face the truth. We engage in half-truths to cover up reality. Well, I can tell you something. The addict and the alcoholic 
they hate reality. Without an altruistic solution, a personality change, a complete shift in beliefs and attitudes, then there's no hope. And this is the truth. Ego has to be smashed. I'm not a popular man. My methods might seem harsh and crazy, but nobody wants to deal with the grittiness of any illness, particularly the ones that can't be fully explained. Instead, we look for scapegoats. We try and blame the addict on everything without taking any responsibility ourselves. You know, we hide. We avoid exposure. We don't want to face up to anything. And this is the world we're living in. Okay, it is improving, but not fast enough. Can we wrap it up? Look, let's, let's just keep rolling. Let's just keep rolling. I'm going to talk. We got people here that are, that are trying to stop me talking about personal things because that's what happens with, with interviews and things that I can't speak. Just keep, keep relaxed, okay? Siberian Forest was an amazing movie, but I feel sick in my stomach. It's not just a physical sickness. I, I actually think it's a spiritual sickness that I feel right now, and I'm fucking dying. And you want to stop me talking, you know? What is this? You know, you pay me money to, to relate characters to the real, real world, but when I relate myself to the real world, you won't even fucking listen for a second. Han's not speaking to me now. So... But... I got the film. I got the film made. What was it all for?
Yeah. 